So the big claim is that seed oils will increase inflammation in the human body. And uh, we will see how much uh, of that is fact and how much of that is fiction. Stick with me. Uh, this is going to be fun. <laughs> All right, let's first start with what seed oils are. Seed oils are oils in the group of vegetable oils. So they're derived from seeds rather than from flesh and pulp, like olive oil or avocado oil. So we're talking soybean oil, rapeseed oil, peanut oil, grapeseed oil, canola oil. There's a big, big range of what type of fat you find in different vegetable oils. Seed oils typically contain more linoleic acid compared to uh, vegetable oils that have been extracted from flesh and pulp. In an olive oil, you have around 14% saturated fats, you have around 10% uh, of linoleic acid, and you have around, you know, 70 plus percent of oleic acid, which is the monosaturated fat. If we look at canola oil, which is extracted from canola seeds, right? Um, we have a lower amount of saturated fats, roughly the same amount of monounsaturated fatty acids, which, you know, is also the majority of that is oleic acid, and then of a little bit higher amount of linoleic acid. Seed oils are around for thousands of years. Some of them are at least. Uh, Wrap seed oil is used for uh, more than 2,000 years as edible oil, and other seed oils are a little bit younger. What is true is that uh, most seed oils are invented within the last 200 years, but uh, other seed oils are part of human diet for a really long time. So the question becomes, why are people now all of a sudden so upset about seed oils, right? The claim is that because you're eating higher amounts of linoleic acid, which can be a precursor to arachidonic acid, which is involved in inflammation responses, um, will lead to higher inflammation in human bodies. A lot of people you can think uh, have looked into this. It sounds all pretty reasonable on the surface at least. But what those studies found out is that with an increased amount of intake of linoleic acid in a human diet, there was no increased inflammation found in individuals. In fact, linoleic acid can reduce the risk of ca cardiovascular diseases. We conclude that virtually no evidence is available from randomized controlled intervention studies among healthy non-infant human beings to show that addition of linoleic acid to the diet increases the concentration of inflammatory markers. Or I can read you from this other study here, just from the abstract, you can read the entire study if you want to. Again, I link all the studies in the description of the video. A recent findings suggest that linoleic acid and arachidonic acid are involved in both pro and anti-inflammatory signaling pathways, thus within the ranges of intake that are humanly possibly achievable in human populations, the evidence does not support that reducing linoleic acid intake below current consumption levels will also decrease inflammation. So I do want to talk a little bit about the real issue as well. So the, one of the major reasons why we have an obesity crisis and why we have an overweight crisis in the United States, because many of the products we eat are so-called empty calories. And those empty calories do contain a lot of oils. And uh, some of the most used oils are rapeseed oils and, and uh, soybean oils. The most used oil is uh, actually palm oil, the most used vegetable oil. And you find those oils in a lot of like processed foods and you find those oils in a lot of what we call empty calorie foods. They're high in calories and low in nutrition and they do lead to uh, obesity and overweight if they're consumed constantly and also over consumed, right? So that's really a huge issue. And then one of the large reasons why we see a lot of like chronic inflammation is actually overweight and obesity. The amount of visceral fat is directly related to the amount of chronic inflammation you will see in humans. That is why so many people go on restrictive diets. That is why so many people have fear about certain food groups. But the balanced diet is always superior to a restrictive diet or to cutting out certain foods. So which means that you should eat around 40% proteins, 40% carbohydrates, 20% fats. Make sure that in those fats you get all the fats that you need 
and then focus on whole foods and focus on less processed foods, nutrient dense foods, caloric, low caloric foods, and you're already better than 95% of Americans. Consistency is the key, not cutting out oils without any scientific evidence. All right, that's uh, it from me today. I see you next time. Subscribe to my channel. I'm out.